I know a little bit about beef, but not as much as this guy you're about to meet. This is Nick Castellana. His family owns Prime Food Distributors, and if you've eaten at a steakhouse in, on the East Coast, but specifically New York, the beef was processed through their facility. They are experts at beef. He's having a cookout today, and he's going to roast this beautiful piece of beef over some homemade contraption. So ghetto, this that is, is awesome. Be amazing. <laughs> that he put together with cinder blocks and some wire. And a, and a screen and uh, so this should be interesting. They have some pretty interesting neighbors. As a matter of fact, that's the Dolan family's house right there. That owns the New York sports teams like the Rangers, the Knicks. That happens to be Billy Joel's house right over there. I'm pretty sure that's Billy Joel's house because in the driveway I saw a Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> this was 195 pounds. Yeah, just this, and this is just a quarter. This is a thousand pound animal. So any of these, these, these range between like 850 to a thousand pounds. So this was a larger of one. So this is just the four quarter. So this is the uh, f five bones for the chuck, seven bones for the rib. The 14th bone is where they, where we split for, to start the hind quarter. On the hind quarter is the uh, loin complex, flank, sirloin, and round. Um, we split between bone number 13 and 14 for this. Uh, you know, hind quarter would have been a little easy. Everybody usually goes to barbecues and gets uh, some type of, you know, porterhouse or something like that. So we wanted to keep it up towards the front because if it's gonna cook like this, I would rather have chuck and brisket. It's what we want. Apparent marbling, but fine, small. We don't want those super, super heavy. So this will probably just be on the front piece, but it'll go away as we start getting into the into the complex. How long has this been aging? About two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. I got a bunch of kids at this party, so I can't have anything super aggressive. Okay, we got the prime roll on it. Storing it? Yeah. Just so that when it comes out, it looks a little presentation to it. And then when we flip it over, I'll show you the break on how it's gonna break. You learned this just from experience or like training? Yeah, so when we took over the place, my brother took over the office side and I went production. And at the time I had 35 or 38 butchers that I was responsible for. And it bothered me that at any point in time, they were able to walk out on me. Right. And how could I manage somebody if I can't do the job just as good, if not better myself? Yep. And ironically enough, I had a couple people that were real cool about it, but at the end of the day, I needed to learn. So I would go off in the side and or like after hours i'd prep myself a couple pieces and i'd start playing with it and i ruined so much meat <laughs> i feel bad i cost us so much money but this is the only way i had to learn the nice thing about it is that anatomy is anatomy it doesn't change so the only time that things start to change is when we move from beef to poultry but actually because we had a large Italian and Greek trade, I worked with a lot of baby lambs. And essentially it's the exact same anatomy and break as this, but a much smaller scale. So, and very easy to work with. This is rough, this is heavy, this is rough, it's difficult to break. Spring lamb, you know, a, a nice piece of veal. Essentially you could seam it with, you just tap it open, seam it with your finger. Tap it open, seam it with your finger. It's super easy to work with, but it shows you where all the muscle separations are and all the seams are, and you could really start to follow it, and it started to make sense to me that way. And then I would just translate it to this. It's, this was more overwhelming than everything because essentially it's from here to, that's one side. So these things are, these things are like you know, 10, 12 feet, and uh, it was just massive. You know, In order to work with it, 
how I do it is actually, this is at my place swinging on a hook. And it's so massive that I actually swing it to the next rail over and put a second hook in it and cut out whatever section I wanna work with. And they just swing apart. And I kind of use its weight, its actual weight to come apart. Um, you can kind of manhandle, manhandle a little piece of lamb or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah. But the anatomy is the same. You know, you split it at the same spots, the muscles, they overlap in the same areas. Um, you know, if, if you could break a leg of lamb for an Easter roast, you could drop around. It's all relative, which is nice. So once we started, once we started doing that, once we started getting more comfortable at it at a smaller scale, we started moving over to beef. And then I learned it, and then it was time to learn how to portion, which is a whole nother monster. You can go anywhere and you can see people cutting steaks. Not well, but you can see them physically doing it. And, um, but very rarely do you go places and you see them breaking four quarters and dropping hinds. Olive oil, salt and pepper. Olive oil to help regulate the heat, salt and pepper. Mother Nature did everything perfect on this piece already. We don't have to do much. We got it. Good enough. Five bones. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Here's our break. This right here is our rib. So seven bones on the rib, five bones on the chuck. That's our, that's our brisket, our bone and brisket. That's our plate. This is what, there's not much meat on this. Generally, we'll smoke this or we'll do something, we'll make a pastrami out of this. Brisket's a brisket. Everybody knows there's a bunch of different things to do with a brisket. This is rib complex, so, and once, if this came off and you saw the difference in the eye of the loin side versus the chuck side, it's two completely different steaks. You can see on a rib steak, one of the biggest parts of it that is most appealing for me is spinalis muscle. So that top muscle on the loin side, it's almost a mirror image of a strip steak. You know, essentially, that looks like a New York strip mm -hmm. because your last, it would go from porter, the filet mignon sits on this side and it's almost like a street cone. It's really, really thick on this end and starts to taper off and then becomes non-apparent right here. So if the loin was attached, you'd have porterhouses, T-bones, bone-in or boneless strips, and then here's bone number 14, if you're working backwards, and then here's number 13. 13 starts your first loin, loin side rib steak. So it's pretty much a mirror image of what a New York strip is. So, and uh, it's so apparently different as we work our way down the piece. The eating experience at bone number six, seven, eight, is completely different than from here forward. It's pretty crazy. So if you go to a restaurant or a steakhouse and you gotta order a rib steak and you get one that looks like it has three completely separate muscles to where it's like this, then you have a little circle, and then you have this large spinalis muscle that sits across the top, that's coming from the chuck side. And for me personally, that top spinalis muscle that's not shown on this side is the best eating. Is the best eating. It's uh, you can never go wrong with that. I always look for that when I'm when I'm ordering something. And then this is Chuck. From here down is Chuck. The Chuck complex and the hip are probably the most complex out of the entire animal. Uh, if you got a butcher that knows what to do with a hip or knows what to do with a Chuck and knows how to work with chicken, they're legit. They know their stuff. Which actually. I'm gonna start that. Just start these bones.
did I understand? I think your grandfather started the. Yes. Yeah. So my grandfather started it. His, our family, our whole network, so all 5,000 of my cousins or his cousins at the time, all had butcher shops. And his idea was to open a wholesale company to service those butcher shops. So pretty much like use the volume of the entire, of the entire family to you know, purchase better. Yeah. And uh, that turned into a pretty decent wholesale company, which then turned into, uh, well, they wanted their own personal outlet for all the stuff that they were getting. So that started the Western Beefs, oh. which completely different model than what we do now. But you know, my, my uncles, my grandfather, they were breaking cattle back then. And they also were growing chickens. So they were doing everything. Not, not catered towards the white tablecloth high end like we are. Easiest thing to do, bone it out, pull a blade bone, throw it in the grinder. You'll get your best burger out of this. You'll get your best burger out of, out of this whole complex because it's fattier than like a chuck roll or a shoulder clot or something like that. Comes out to like a 70-30 type burger, but it's on point, it's on point. That's, that's what I use to start the majority of my burgers with. From here down, we bone this whole piece out and we pull that blade bone. And then I'm gonna cook it today and then I'm actually gonna break it like it's normally broke. Uh, well, there's gonna be about, 100 and, about 85 to 100 people here. So I think we'll be good. Yeah, I, so. uh, I also got uh, a couple pork butts in the other house going. Uh, Berkshire, Berkshire pork butts, nah, we just, they're sitting in whiskey. Whiskey and maple syrup right now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I like sweet. Mm. I like my pork to be sweet. So just in the oven? Just in the oven, super low. Um, we're gonna do the same thing right before they come out. We're gonna crank it up and do like a broil so we get a hard crisp on the top of it, on the fat side. But uh, we're doing this, which is gonna be just a big station. By the time we're ready to cook, I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna bring out the cleaver and I'm actually gonna separate it bone by bone and serve it steakhouse style the entire piece. Uh, Pork, we're doing pork sliders with, we made, uh, we made uh, like a pickled coleslaw with jalapenos. So we're gonna do that, obviously burgers. And we have uh, Snake River Farms hot dogs, Kobe hot dogs. Yes. And, yeah, uh, those from you before, uh, oh no, actually I ordered it from them. Those are amazing. They're really good. Yeah. They're really good. Uh, dogs. Yeah, you know what, they're, I've never bit into a hot dog before that had bite like that. They're almost like a brat or something, yeah, or, yeah. or some type of like cased sausage meat rather than a hot dog. It was really good, different too. Um, we're doing that. We got a pizza station, which I'm excited. I'm probably the most excited for the pizza station at anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be good old American 4th of July cooking. Uh, a, little, a little more upscale than- A little bit, a little bit. <laughs>